many of them probably thought I was either crazy or suicidal <laughs> to take that job. And I took the time to study. And so for about two months, I did my due, I did my due diligence. So I did store checks. I, let, I read everything I could. I listened to the earnings calls. The previous management team was talking about headwind. And mentally, I said, let me call Tim Cook and Jeff Bezos and ask them, how's the wind where you're sailing? And both of them would have said, oh, yeah, the wind is fabulous. We're having the time of our lives. And so in my mind, I said, so wind is not the problem. We, Best Buy, must be the problem. What were people telling you when you agreed to become the CEO of Best Buy? And what were you thinking when you saw all this stuff being written about the company? Yeah, so Jacob, my, my friends in, in Minneapolis, uh, many of them probably thought I was either crazy or suicidal <laughs> to take that job. And, and, and candidly, when I got the call from Jim Citrin at Spencer Stewart in, in around May of, uh, of 2012, I took the job on September 4th, my first reaction was to say, Jim, Jim, you're crazy, right? Uh, I know nothing about retail and this place is a mess. So why are you bothering me? <laughs> He's a good friend, so he was not bothering me. And then he said, no, no, you should look at it. This one is for you. You have great experience with turnarounds, transformations. The board is not looking for a retail expert. They're looking for somebody who can take a fresh perspective. So I took the time to study. And so for about two months, I did my due, I did my due diligence before, you know, uh, moving forward with the job for sure. So I did store checks. I, let, I read everything I could. I listened to the earnings calls. Um, I spoke with a bunch of alumni. And what struck me is that the previous management team was talking about headwinds. You know, mm -hmm. they were great, but the problem with the external world. And mentally, I said, let me call Tim Cook and Jeff Bezos and ask them, how's the wind where you're sailing? <laughs> and both of them would have said, oh, yeah, the wind is fabulous. We're having the time of our lives. And so in my mind, I said, so wind is not the problem. We, Best Buy, must be the problem. And it's true that... Consumer electronics is a great market. You know, we all want these uh, gadgets. They play a very important part in, uh, role in our lives. In particular, you know, we are now all working from home or learning from home, and uh, and so technology is critical. But even before COVID, but even more so now. Do you want to hear something really crazy? Ninety-six percent of the people who watch videos on this channel are not subscribed. Help me change that number around by subscribing so that you can get access to more videos just like this one. And now let's get back to the content. People are excited about technology, mm -hmm. but they often need help because it can be overwhelming for many of yeah. us. It can be confusing. So what yep. should I choose? How do I make everything work together? And if it's if it's not working, is it you know if Netflix is not working tonight, is it you know the the the, the pipeline into the home, the the, uh, the the router, is it the the Wi-Fi in the home, is it the TV, is it the streaming device, honey? What is it? And Best Buy can be honey to everyone. And so we, I felt we had a critical role to play for customers. And we also had a critical role to play for the vendors. Because you know, the, 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 the world's foremost tech companies, they spend billions of dollars on R&D to create these great new products. And a world without Best Buy is a grim world for them. Because the only place where you can see the picture quality of a TV is in real life. You cannot see it you know, uh, uh, online. Same with a sound system. If you want to listen to the sound system. So shelves with just boxes are not going to be inspiring. So granted, a number of companies like Apple and Sony to a degree, Microsoft had been building their stores, but nobody wants to build stores if you're a, a, a hardware manufacturer, except if you're Apple. And so I felt, in part coming from my uh, travel distribution experience, when travel distribution, all of the money is made from the vendors. I felt we had a service that we could provide to these tech companies. And in the end, what we did was, you know, we did deals with the, all of the world's foremost tech companies to allow them to showcase, you know, the fruit of their billions of dollars in our stores. And we became like the Coliseum where all of the gladiators can, you know, show how strong they are. And so I felt that there was an opportunity that we have enough assets and that because of the problems were self-inflicted, we could effectuate a turnaround. So I told the recruiting committee of the board, look, I want the job. And here's my eight-page memo on how what I'm going to do if you, if you guys recruit me. And never look back. So what was on that uh, eight-page memo? What are some of the things that you told the board you were going to do? 
uh, you know, it was my view of the diagnosis, so uh, around the uh, the opportunity, you know, where, where we were, but and it was this idea of the role we had to play in the world, vis-a-vis -vis the customers, and vis-a-vis -vis the vendors, and then some of the operational improvement. Because I had done these tour checks, and I, I, you know, gave examples of, you know, a mediocre uh, experience uh, as a customer online and in the stores, and that this was uh, this was fixable. So this is. My, what my hypotheses were, and that's importantly, this is how I envisage working with the team, working with the board, working with the various stakeholders, and how I was thinking of approaching the uh, the job. So it was a bit my hundred day uh, hundred day plan.